morning. So nice to have you all here on this Sunday morning where we can praise the Lord and, and just celebrate being together as a family of God. Um, lots of announcements once again this morning. The first one is to remind you to um, please sign the, all the sign-ups in the back of the church. One is for bowling, and that is for Saturday, November 13th. This is a fellowship bowling event. This is not a fundraiser. My understanding was that you all did bowling fundraisers in the past. This is not one of those times. This is just for fellowship. So if you would like to go bowling, please sign up in the back. Also, on Sunday after the service on November 14th, we will be having a safe sanctuary training with Kevin Anderson, who is just going to be doing some training with just our folks about active intruder um, training. So if you're interested in attending that, please make sure you sign up in the back because we will have a light lunch afterwards. So we want to make sure we have enough for everyone. Also, pies are needed for the Thanksgiving dinner. So if you are able to make a pumpkin pie for the Thanksgiving um, dinner that will be the community dinner that will be held here on the 17th. Please sign up for that. And just as a reminder, our Operation Shoe Boxes are due in two weeks from today. So on Sunday, November 14th, very busy day. That is when um, shoe boxes are due. Also, in your bulletin, you will notice a green sheet um, for Christmas Eve services, your choice. If you voted last week, we ask that you don't vote again. <laughs> um, but please fill out this form, put it in the offering plate, and we'll collect it after church. We're just trying to get an idea of what the desires of the congregation is for Christmas Eve services. Also, next week, please, if you are able to bring a bell of some sort, jingle bell, cow bell, I don't care what kind of bell, <laughs> um, that'll be used as part of the service next week for our All Saints Sunday celebration. Um, if you don't have a bell, um, we have a limited number of bells available, but if you do have a bell, we ask that you bring that along with you. I think that is all the announcements. Are there any other announcements that I need to make known for the good of the order? Okay. Um, I know at this time the ushers are going to come around and collect for the Hickson Scholarship on the fifth Sunday of, um, of the calendars. We collect for um, Hickson Scholarship. So if you're able to contribute to that, we ask that you do that. Um, could you play some music while they do that, Jeremy? Thank you.
And just one more quick announcement before I forget. I need help um, doing the liturgy on Sunday mornings. So if you're not afraid to come and <laughs> speak in front of people, would you please sign up on the clipboard in the back? Okay, would you please stand for the call to worship? Come, let us praise the Lord. For God has done wonderful things for us. Come, let us praise the Lord. And if you would remain standing as we sing the first hymn, Give Thanks, as found in the Faith We Sing book 2036. prayer. Lord, we gather here this day in praise and thanksgiving for all the wonderful things you have done for us. Help us to be faithful disciples in all that we think, do, and say, that your great love may be revealed and offer healing to all people. Amen. You may be seated.
And if the children want to come forward, do I have any children want to come forward? All right. Now, you probably have heard this story before, but I love this time of year because you never know. You know, this is, this is meaningful stuff, and uh, it's a good reminder of who God is and who we are to Jesus Christ. What is this? All right, you passed the first test. Good job. Oh, good morning. All righty. So, what's today other than Sunday? Halloween, right. So there are kids who are going to go out trick-or-treating tonight, right? Are you guys going? You are. I bet you're, I know you all aren't. Your parents bribed you. But, <laughs> so what are you going to be dressed up as? Do you know? What's your costume? Want to tell me? A what? BB-8. BB-8. Oh, from Star Wars. Awesome. And what about you? Ray. I don't think I know who. Oh, that was Star Wars too. Oh, that's right. I knew that. What, are you going trick or treating? What are you going to dress up? What? A ninja. Oh boy, look out for that one. <laughs> well, you all know that you're supposed to go to houses of people that you know, right? To just be safe, be close to your parents, right? So make sure you're safe tonight. Well. Today, I brought this pumpkin, or another name for it is a jack-o'-lantern. Have you guys carved out your pumpkins yet? What's that? And you smashed them. Okay. <laughs> wow. So you, you've already carved out your pumpkins, right? And did you put something special on the inside of it, or is it just a candle? All right. Well, then you already know half of this. The children's message today. <laughs> so I carved out this pumpkin, but you know what? I picked this pumpkin out, and when I picked it out, it had all kinds of dirt on it, and I had to clean it off. You know, and this is the way that God, God talks to us that way too. He picks us, and he cleans us all up on the outside. But you know what else is special? What happens when we take the lid off, and there's all, all kinds of what inside? seeds and yucky stuff and it's sticky isn't it you got to carve it out right you got to take out all that yucky stuff right because we don't want that in there do we that's right if you can't get it out with your hands you use a spoon that's right so this this is like us you know when we when we say yes to jesus say yes jesus i want to be your follower he takes out all the yucky stuff in our life, the sins, the doubts, the fears, all that kind of stuff, and cleans us all out. And I, I did that, and, uh-oh, now it's going to give me complications. And I carved a face. Why do we carve faces on pumpkins? Oh, Okay. Well, I don't like to make my pumpkins look scary because you know what? There might be lots of little kids who come to my house, and that's the last thing I want them to do is to be afraid of the pumpkin. So I put a smile on my pumpkin. That's what you did too, right? Because you know what? When we say yes to Jesus, that puts a smile on our face, and it puts a smile on Jesus' face. But why do we have holes there, and why do we put a candle inside? That's right, so it can light up. So when we say yes to Jesus, we get the Holy Spirit living inside of us and allows us to shine. Because we want people to see our smiles and see that Jesus loves us and that we said yes to Jesus. So we want to make sure that our light shines for Jesus. So maybe that's a different way you can look at your pumpkins. That, you know what, um, world... I love Jesus, and Jesus loves me, and I want you to know that. And I do that by putting the light inside the pumpkin, but Jesus does that by putting the Holy Spirit living inside us. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, let our lights shine for you. Let others know that you love us and we love you. So, Lord, allow your Holy Spirit to work within us to shine for you, First, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Okay, you guys can go back to your seats. Thank you for coming up. The scripture reading this morning, the first one's taken from Psalm 146. Hear these words. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is, in, is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations, praise the Lord. And if you would please stand for the gospel reading. It's taken from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. Hear these words. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked them, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love your God, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, and with all of your soul, and with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well, said teacher, the man replied, you are right in saying that God is one and there's no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbors as yourself is more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight this day, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. How many of you remember your kindergarten year in school? Anybody? Some of you may never even had kindergarten. <laughs> I hear some mumbling. Some of the basics of kindergarten then was to learn our ABCs and one, two, threes and how to sit still, right? Well, do you ever remember your teachers teaching you to recite the Pledge of Allegiance? That was a tough assignment. For many children at that age, the world seemed huge. The words seemed huge. They had a hard time even pronouncing the words. We would have been lucky if our teachers attempted to teach us the meaning of the words. I don't remember any of my teachers teaching us the meaning of the words. But I mean, what does allegiance mean anyway? Well, according to Webster's Dictionary, allegiance means devotion or loyalty to a person, group, or cause. And pledge means a binding promise 
or an agreement to do or to forbear a person who has promised. So when we pledge an allegiance, we are promising to devote or to be loyal to a person, group, or cause. Not only do we pledge our loyalty to our country, but there are many other things that we pledge to, like a role of an officer, a pledge to be with our spouse, loyal to our spouse, a pledge to be a faithful member of the United Methodist Church, and so on. Now, these pledges are temporary. They will not be used for eternal purposes. Most of the time when we think about pledges, we can't help think that it has something to do with government or politics. That's just what our minds were molded into believing ever since we were introduced to the pledges in kindergarten. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that having an understanding of pledges is a bad thing. It's just that we need to weigh our priorities and to search deep within ourselves as to who or to what are we going to give our pledge or allegiance to. Who is it that we want to worship each day, God or man? David is presenting before us this day a way in which we need to know that God is and always will be the one in whom we are to worship eternally. Now, you have hymnals in front of you, and I would invite you to turn to page 858 in the hymnal. This is our Psalm 146. And I want you to follow along as best as you can as to when we look at this passage together and to discover what David wrote about here. We could easily read through this psalm and conclude that David was trying to tell us not to put our trust in princes. But of course, there is more to just that in this piece of scripture. So I'd like to break it down just a little bit at a time and see what God's word has to say to us this day. First of all, David is expressing his praise to God in verses 1 and 2. David is thankful to God for getting him through some tough, tough times in his life. You know, this psalm is actually the first part of a quintet of praises to God for what he has done for David. Now, in some of your Bible translations, you will see that the descriptions for Psalm 146 is titled, Praise for God's Help. That is, praise for God's activity on behalf of the poor. Then if we were to read further, the next part, Psalm 147, is praise to God's care for Jerusalem. That is praise to God for renewing and sustaining powers. Then further on, Psalm 148 is praise for God's universal glory. That is praise to God's creative acts. Then 149, praise for God's goodness to Israel. That is praise for God's victorious deliverance. And then lastly, Psalm 150. Praise for God's surpassing greatness. Now these last five chapters of Psalm encourage us to praise God. To praise is to recognize equality or qualities in another, usually not so obvious until they are stated out loud. Putting it another way, vital praise means we bring forth from our hearts that eternal praise we have for God. Now, eternal must at some point become external. And so it should be loud. You know, sometimes in our worship, we become almost comatose 
in our approach to give thanks to God. We tend to just go through the motions and don't get excited about the opportunity we have together to praise God for all that he has done in our lives. You know, in David's day, they would sing praises to God and the choir would response, respond, hallelujah. It's kind of like the cheerleaders who want the crowds at a football game to shout back the letters to spell out the home team's name. The worship leader says the praise. The people echo the praises back towards heaven with a hallelujah. Now I bet you can guess what I'm going to ask you to do, right? We're going to try this. I will shout a praise and your response will be hallelujah. Are you ready? Give it all you got. Praise the Lord. Praise God for his mighty works. Praise God for his surpassing love. Praise God for healing the brokenhearted. Praise God for his grace and mercy. Good job. Now we could go on all day long praising God, and that would be great. Nothing would give God the honor and the glory that he so deserves if we could remember to do that throughout our day. After all, in this psalm we are looking at today encourages us to praise God while we have being. That means every day that we breathe that we are alive. Don't you have something that you could be thankful for this day? When you recognize that gift, give praise to God. Now, as we look at the next section of the Psalm 146, we are warned not to put our trust in princes. Like I said earlier, our teachers, our earthly authorities, our bosses are temporary. Their rule does not go beyond this earthly living. We cannot be sure of man's ability, for they are like Adam, weak and mortal. Jeremiah 17, verse 5 says this, Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on the flesh for his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. We turn away When we turn away from the Lord, that does not give him the honor and the glory that he deserves. Matter of fact, Psalm 118 verse 9 tells us, It's better to trust in the Lord than to put our confidence in in princes. Psalm 60 verse 11 adds, For vain is the help of man. In other words, we will most likely fall or fail if we put our trust in man and not in God. Why should we put our trust in God? Well, because he controls all the nations. In Daniel chapter 4, verse 32, Nebuchadnezzar was used as an object lesson to teach us that God is the supreme authority. It says, you shall be driven away from human society, and your dwelling shall be with the animals of the field. You shall be made to eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you until you have learned that the Most High has sovereignty over the kingdom of mortals and gives it to whom he will. I hope none of us think like cows. It seems as if our needs are so great these days, and I think you can agree with me. For we need money for houses, our vehicles, our insurance, for food, clothing, utilities, and a thousand other things. It's like we're running on a hamster's wheel, running and running, but never seem to be going anywhere. But you know, we have a father in heaven who supplies all of our needs according to his riches and his glory. 
God has the ability to meet those needs of ours. God is in complete control. He may use a little widow woman who only has a handful of flour and a tablespoon full of oil. We may share some little boy's lunch. We may be fed by a raven or dine on a fish caught in a miraculous manner. But God will meet our needs. God knows what we need and will supply them abundantly. So how do we make our needs known to God? He already knows them, but how do we make our needs known to God? Well, we need to pray about it. God wants to hear from us. He tells us to ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. We are not to take our Heavenly Father for granted. Jesus prayed. Jesus is our example. Don't you think that we should follow suit? We all need prayer, don't we? One cute instance of prayer was when Dennis the Menace was kneeling beside his bed, hands folded, looking towards heaven. With an imploring look on his face, he prayed, I'm here to turn myself in. Do you feel like that sometimes? Do you feel as if you need to turn yourself in because no one cares for you? Well, Jesus cares for you. He's been tempted in every way, just as we are tempted. Yet he was without sin. When Jesus prays, the Father answers. Jesus is the sole and only mediator between God and man. There's not another, not Krishna, not Mohammed, not Buddha, not Moses. There is no other but Jesus. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man is Jesus Christ, as 1 Timothy reminds us. So when you think that no one cares, that no one understands you, that there is no one who understands what you're going through, remember that Jesus knows it all. He knows all about you, and he's there for you. There is nothing to worry about. You know, Joe used to worry all the time about everything. His friends all knew him as a warrior. One day, Bill was walking down the street when he saw his worrying friend bouncing along as happy as a man could be. Joe was actually whistling and humbling, humming and wearing a huge smile on his face. Bill could hardly believe his eyes. It was obvious that a radical transformation had taken place. He stopped Joe and asked, Joe, what's happened to you? You don't seem worried anymore. I never saw a happier man. Joe replied, it's wonderful, Bill. I haven't worried for several weeks now. Bill asks, well, how did you manage it? What brought about the change? Joe explained, you see, I hired a man to do all of my worrying for me. Bill said, wow, that's great. How much does, it, how much does he charge you for this? A thousand dollars a week. A thousand dollars a week? How could you possibly pay him? Joe answered, that's his worry. Turn your worrying over to Jesus and believe it's his worry. Jesus cares for each and every one of us. Nothing is too big, nothing is too small that Jesus can't handle. Of all this that I have said, that I've been talking about, verses 5 through 9, telling us God will take care of us if we will just put our trust in him. He will look out for those who are faithful, and he will take care of those who are oppressed, 
who are hungry, who are lonely, who are orphaned. We are God's handiwork. And why wouldn't he want to take care of that which he has created? God wants a relationship with us. If we would allow our relationship with God to be opened and yet be filled with trust, God will do amazing things in and through us. He will give us the strength that we need. You know, God chose you before you chose him. So we need to put our confidence in God, for he is the God of Jacob the God of matchless grace, God of infinite patience and of transforming power. We must hope in the providence of God for all we need in this life and in the grace of God, which that which is to come. And when God uses us for his glory, we are to praise him. Remember that the kingdom of God will not be left to any successor. This Messiah is the head over all things to the church and will be so until this world stands. There is no one who could reign above God, for God's reign is forever. For this we shall forever praise him. Hallelujah. Remember, God's reign is forever. Let us pray. Most precious and holy God, we give you thanks for your word for us this morning. You are our Savior, our Redeemer, our friend. Help us not to shy away from making our needs known to you. For Lord, you promise that you will always be with us that you would never abandon us. So, Lord, this day we give you thanks and we give you praise for all that you have done, all that you are willing to do now and forevermore. Amen. Our next hymn, I think, is Yezu, Yezu, um, page 432 in your hymnal if you'd like to use them.
may be seated. And I want to invite you to lift up those in your heart as we have this morning prayer this morning. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we have a tendency to wander in the wilderness of our own creating. When opportunities to serve you and to make commitments to your service we are given, we consult our calendars to see if there's anything else we have to do. We place our needs and our schedules before our service to you. Lord, help us to reorder our priorities Help us to look again at the wonderful opportunities you give us to be of service to you by working with others, reaching out to heal and to help. Lord, bring us to the light of your love once again. Heal our wounded souls. Let us love you truly with our whole heart with our whole soul, with our whole mind, and with our whole strength. Give us courage and persistence as your disciples, that your great love and glory may shine through all of our deeds of loving kindness. Allow us to be sources of strength for those who are weak, to be light for those who are living in darkness, and to be examples of peace and love where there is hatred. And Lord, be with all of those this day that need your healing touch. For those who are recuperating from surgeries, for those who are needing rest this day. Allow your strength to be their strength. Be with those who are feeling a loss this day because a loved one has left this earth. Allow your arms of comfort to embrace them to allow your peace to surround them this day. And Lord, we pray for those who are brokenhearted, for those who are just broken, who need your love, your grace, and your mercy this day. Allow someone to enter into their lives this day to be that disciple who will allow their light to shine through them for you. So Lord, be with us the rest of this worship time that we remember to praise you in all things. For we ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I would invite you now to please stand as the, we have the doxology and the offering brought forward.
word of Jesus' power, O oh God. So may we spread the word of your grace as we share these gifts in our very lives with those in need. May these offerings be instruments of your healing, your justice, and your good news in this community and around the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Would you please join us in the closing hymn, He Leadeth Me. benediction. The pathway is open before you this day. It is a path of peace and hope brought to others by God's almighty love and wondrous blessings. Go in peace, bring in hope to all those that you meet. Go in peace, my friends. Amen.